In this tutorial, we will take a look at the principles behind coloring line art. From coloring books to illustrations to logo work, the few simple ideas we'll use to add color to this village skyline will prove invaluable for a variety of projects. We'll be making use of masks, adjustment layers, and blending modes. Masks will allow us to paint freely, in effect coloring over the lines, while keeping our work confined to its proper space. One way to think of masks is to imagine that the area we've selected is where we wish to paint, and so we've used masking tape to cover up all the other areas of the canvas, so as not to paint in those areas. Adjustment layers will allow us to make editable, non-destructive changes to the art as needed. Blending modes take the colors and textures in the current layer and apply them in different ways to the layers below them. Now looking at this present piece of line work, there are any number of ways in which we might add color to it. But for our example, let's focus on simple ones. There are essentially two primary sections we will need to look at. The rooftops, including chimneys and turrets, and the sky. With this in mind, let's begin. The first thing we will need to do is make our line art here a regular layer. As it is at the moment, it is functioning as a background layer as noted by the italic word background. As a background layer, our ability to use it is pretty strictly limited. We cannot move it. Control, click, and drag does nothing. Note the lock. And we do not have the use of blending modes. So what we need to do is make this, our background layer, into a normal Photoshop layer with all inherent rights and privileges. The way we do this is to simply double click on the word background next to its layer thumbnail. This will bring up the new layer dialog box. Let's change the name of this layer to line art and click OK. We should now notice that the layer name is no longer in italics the lock has gone away, and all of the blending modes are now available to us. This layer, line art, will now be our top layer. All the coloring we do will be on layers below the line art. That may seem strange, as the line art layer is a solid mass of black and white. Every pixel of the layer is filled, and opacity is set to 100%. The way this will work is through the use of blending modes. Let's do a quick experiment. First, we shall create a new adjustment layer. At the bottom of the Layers palette, click the fourth button from the left, the half black, half white circle. This is our adjustment layer tool. Having clicked on the tools button, we are given a number of choices. Let's select solid color. This will bring up Photoshop's Color Picker tool, allowing us to choose a color that suits our fancy. For now, let's choose a bright, solid red and click OK. As we can see, the line art layer is entirely obscured by the new layer of red. And what happens when we drag the new layer of red below the line art layer? It of course, disappears completely, having been obscured by the line art layer above it. This is where blending modes will begin to come in handy. Let's see how a couple different blending modes will affect the way our project looks. Making certain that we have the line art layer selected, we can go up to the blending modes drop down and select from the many modes. Normal will always bring us back to our default blend. Now let's try Multiply. Multiply works great, turning our black lines solid while making the line art layer's white spaces appear to be transparent. This is actually the blending mode we will be using for our line art layer, but while we're here, we might as well consider two other blending modes. Screen has the exact opposite effect, making line art's white pixels visible while rendering its blacks as transparent and overlay works almost as a strange combination of the two effects. Anyway, let's select multiply again and temporarily hide our red layer. 
Let's paint the sky now.